everybody. Welcome to another session of AMA Junior Camp. It's me, Claire, your host and camp counselor for the week. I'm so excited that you're here again today. It is Thursday, July 9th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm so excited that you guys are here today. Today's project is going to be a lot of fun. I also want to do a little shout out. I got a lot of great videos yesterday of you flying your rocket mice, and that was amazing. So I want to go ahead and thank Genesis, Henry, Quincy, Maverick, Sam, Grant, Jem, and Joe for sending me those awesome Rocket Mouse um, videos and photos. Those were fantastic. I really appreciate that. And again, just like the all the other days so far, be sure to send me videos of you flying your various interesting fun projects at education at model aircraft. Or, oh, Tyler just asked me a question. Where do you post your videos? You are going to email them to me. So if you take a video of yourself flying one of your projects that you make this week, all you have to do is email me, education at modelaircraft.org. It's been so really fun to project. see those come through, too. Yeah, just to echo that. And I'm Kyle Jarris, Education Director. Happy to see you guys back at camp. We're really excited. Today's project is project number four. And it is right here for you guys. Here we go. I'm gonna do the we're gonna do the drop down cam so you guys can see what I've got going on right here. So we're gonna have stuff out of our um, personal pizza box as well as stuff out of project number four. So this project is something that um, I discovered in more or less the archives of the education department. This is a da -da -da -da. you'll see what it is. Oh, there's a lot in the in the envelope today. This is a big one. This is a paper kite made out of a paper shopping bag. So we've got our super cool, whoop, there we go, shopping bag with our official AMA Junior stamp. And so for those of you who did not get the flight pack in the mail, this is just your regular um, paper shopping bag that you'd get at the grocery store that your groceries would come in when you uh, left the grocery store and in this little envelope here is something that we're going to use a little bit later it looks like we're having a party here yep we have streamers so i'm going to set those aside for now and we also need to get a couple things out of our box so we're going to need of course our kite string we're going to need tape and scissors. I think that is just about it out of the box for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. I have some really cool historical information for you guys about kites. You might not know a whole lot about them. I didn't know about, too much about kites before I came to the AMA. I actually did a whole lot of research on them. And so nobody actually knows when uh, kites were invented. It's, it's another one of those projects where we don't really know who made the very first kite, but some scholars do believe that a couple of gentlemen who were Chinese philosophers, actually, uh, Mo Di and Gong Shu Ban, invented the kite in 5th century BCE, so quite a while ago. And kites, they gradually spread across Asia and they grew in popularity in various countries in that region. So in Japan, this is actually really cool, um, in Japan, only samurai we're allowed to fly kites. Samurai and lords, like high nobility, were allowed to fly kites. They were um, considered a leisurely activity that only the very wealthy and well-to-do were allowed to engage in, which I think is pretty interesting. Over in India, um, people actually used kites to send each other messages. So if you couldn't um, see your sweetheart for a long time, you could send them a little love note on a kite, which I think is very romantic. I think that's very sweet. Let's see, what else can I tell you guys about kites? So gradually they made their way to the Western world and one of the people that is credited with bringing kites to um, Europe is actually Marco Polo. That's right. So Marco Polo brought them back and um, also Portuguese sailors brought them back while traveling around the world. They brought them back as presents for their kids, which I think is really cool. I think that's fascinating. Um, so more modern history, well, 1700s isn't 
really that modern. I mean, that was 300 years ago, but still more modern than uh, 500 BCE. So in 1749, Alexander Wilson, who was a British scientist, he actually used kites to measure air temperature in different layers of the atmosphere. So he must have had a very long string on um, <laughs> on his kite in order to do that because the atmosphere is pretty high up there. And then, of course, you guys have probably heard the story about Benjamin Franklin. I, I don't want to call it discovering electricity, but he did prove the theory that lightning was, in fact, electricity. And he used a kite with a key tied to this string. Now, I don't recommend you doing that. If it's stormy <laughs> out there where you live today, please do not go outside and fly your kite. Save that for another day. We already know what happened with Benjamin Franklin. We don't need a repeat. <laughs> so, and of course, the um, the Wright brothers also used kites in experiment early experimentations in flight. The kite is known as a proto-aircraft. It mimics the flight of birds, and it also utilizes the four forces of flight, which I think is pretty cool. So we're going to take our beautiful, beautiful bag. And you see, if you got a kit in, um, if you purchase a flight kit, you'll see that there's a stamp on one side of your bag. So that is going to be, we're going to actually flip our bag over. And you see, I'm kind of opening it because I'm going to cut down the middle of the bag. And so I'm only cutting one layer, okay? We're just going to cut a single layer down the middle. Control surfaces on a kite? That's a great question, Laura, or possibly Grant, because I know Grant sent me some videos uh, earlier this week, and I believe Laura's his mom. Um, yes, you can. There are some very complex kites out there. This is going to be a fairly simple kite. So, unfortunately, this kite is not necessarily designed to have particularly fancy control surfaces, but it is possible. If you look up giant kites, there's some really big kites out there in the world. So, there we go. So, I have folded it out. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. So loud. <laughs> it's very loud. I apologize, everybody watching this. I'm video. trying to do this quietly, too. It's a little bit tough. It's, it's kind of loud. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, here we go. So, I'm going to... This is hard to show on the drop down, but it works. So I'm cutting, I'm actually cutting the bottom out of my kite because we're not, actually not going to need this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that bottom part of the kite, we're going to get rid of that. Oh, perfect. All right, so I'm cutting out the bottom of the kite here. And if you do it a little sloppily, that's okay. Um, you can always clean it up a little bit later. Mm -hmm. There we go. We don't need that part anymore. Okay. All right. Here is our kite. So it's a little bit big to show on the camera, which is kind of difficult. So I'll, I'm going to use the uh, lesson plan that we got in our flight pack to show you guys kind of what we're going to be doing here. Oh my goodness. It's all stuck together. Here we go. All right. So if you received a flight pack, if you received a flight pack in the mail, then um, you will have these instructions on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get this nice and flattened out while you guys catch up because I don't want to skip ahead at all. But there is, there we go, instructions inside of your flight pack. And you can see there is an illustration of, wah, blah, I lost my, um, my train of thought there. Um, this is the instructions for how to cut out your kite. So we are going to just take a second and we are going to um, 
make sure everybody can be caught up because this paper bag is a little bit more difficult to um, cut out than it might seem. So what I what I did is I'm going to fold my bag back up to how it originally was. So here is how the bag started out. I flipped it open over and from the top of the bag, from the opening of the bag, I cut down the middle and then I somewhat carefully cut out the bottom of the bag. So what you're going to end up with is a big rectangle, a big long rectangle, and which you will eventually be um, using for your kite. Exciting. And Claire, I'll jump in real quick and say that, you know, there's some measurements listed. Um, those are kind of approximates, so you can kind of fudge this a little bit, but try to be equal on both sides once we get to the next steps. And one of the things that might help with that that's actually in your box, uh, pizza box as Claire calls it, uh, is this measuring device. So, um, you know, feel free to utilize that if you need to. Yeah, you guys got a, in your pizza box, you got a protractor. This is actually something we're going to use tomorrow in our project, but there is a ruler on one edge of it. Feel free to use that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use it so you guys can see what we're talking about here. All right, guys, I'm going to wait a second here. I notice a lot of us are um, asking to for me to hang on. So why don't you guys work on catching up and you just let me know when you're ready, okay? And if you're already ready, like, feel free to pull out a pen or a marker or a pencil and just be creative with this thing. Have fun. Draw some on it. You know, put your name, especially if there's several of you there at the house working on these together. Um, uh, make sure that uh, you can identify your, your kite up in the air. And just so you guys know, this is the front. This is going to be the front of the kite. So if you um, want to decorate your kite, you want to decorate on this side. Okay. Unfortunately, I only have one paper bag in the studio, so I can't show you guys how to cut it out again. I've got the bottom of mine. I don't know if it would be helpful to try to show that or not. Um, so this is the bottom of my bag. So I cut this this bottom part. Yeah, out. and if you lay it out, that bottom just goes right in the middle of what she's got laid out right now. Like that's where it came from, where it was detached from, if that helps. Isn't there a uh, town in China right now, Claire, that actually like calls themselves the, the kite capital of the world or something like that? And they have like a festival every year? Yes, absolutely. So um, it's Weifang, China. And yeah, it's, it's known as the birthplace of kites. And every year, well, probably not this year, but usually <laughs> they have a kite festival. And I would love to see that. Um, Maybe this year they'll put messages on their kites for the rest of the world since we can't go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Chinese kites are really impressive. They're really beautiful. A lot of times they'll make dragons or uh, pirate ships or birds. It's, they're, they're fascinating. Definitely, with your parents' permission, look up giant kites on Google. Mm -hmm. There's some really, really cool stuff. There's also some really cool stuff that people have done with kites in, in far, insofar as like removing the string and actually creating a thrust device, like a motor on these things uh, in the RC realm. And um, to kind of go along with those Chinese kites, some of those are like uh, Japanese or excuse me, Chinese dragons. And um, it's really cool um, how those things work out. And my phone's going off. So let me uh, turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> That is right. And here we are making paper bag kites. This is our first step to creating one of those motorized kites or possibly a dragon kite. <laughs> Someday, possibly. That would be really cool. All right. So 
I think we're probably about caught up and ready to move forward. If you missed out, then yeah, at the uh, either at the end of the video or even maybe even right now, you could go back and rewatch that first part uh, in different segments, and that might help out. Yeah, definitely. So here is our beautiful, beautiful kites. And so if you guys have the instruction sheet, there we go. So approximately 12 inches would be this part. So from this crease to this crease. And one way that you can actually make this a little bit easier on yourself and one another way that I'm probably going to do it so that you guys can see this better, I'm going to be cutting off the, lar the outer flaps of the bag. So I'm going to cut right here and leave this crease, this section of the bag intact. And that way it'll be easier for you guys to follow along and see what I'm doing because this is one of the larger pro um, projects for this week. And so our drop down camera is not quite, um, it's not quite far enough away from me for you to be able to see it, but it's not gonna affect your kite at all. It's not going to make it fly any less well. So don't worry. I'm just gonna make a slightly smaller kite just so that it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see. All right. All right. That looks good. That'll be easier to see on camera, I think. Yeah. And I drew those out too. I don't know if you can see that on my screen or not, but we've got the measurements. Uh, maybe not. I'm going to borrow a, um, a pencil from my pizza box. This is actually for tomorrow, but I'm going to borrow it anyway. Um, so, let's see? There we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, I'm going to start right here where this crease in the bag is. I'm just going to make a little mark right there. You can kind of see it. There it is. You see the little mark I made? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I am going to, I'm going to draw a line from here to here. According to our directions, we want it to be a seven inches. So this protractor is six inches um, long. So here is six, and then we're just going to follow up that. And as long as you have the same angle on both sides, it'll work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out this distance right here that I made. So it's about three and a quarter. So I'm going to make a mark on this side and then measure it down to three and a quarter. And I'm going to draw that line, that diagonal line. Yes, yes, they can be spray painted. If you want to spray paint yours, go for it. Absolutely. One really fun thing about this project is that it's very customizable. Oh, my angle turned out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to just fix that these are very customizable so you can um, do just about anything you want with your with your kite and so we have our mark here on the corner we are going to again we're going to utilize this crease in the bag and we're going to mark right down here on the bottom now I'm going to use, because this isn't quite big enough, I'm actually going to use my project folder. This is what you do. This is how you improvise, my friends. So I'm going to use my handy dandy project folder as a straight edge, because this one we don't actually have to measure. So hopefully I will... You kind of want to like guesstimate it there. So I measured it from this corner. I'm just going to slide my my uh, straight edge up and down to the bottom. So now I have another angle right there. 
So this is a seven inch line. And then this line is a little bit long, bigger than, let's see, this would be eight and a half by 11. So 11, this is probably about 13 inches, which is, yeah, that's on there. So I'm going to go on this side and show you guys how we're gonna measure from here to down here. Someone asked about uh, dipping their kite. I don't think that would work. I think it would probably get really wet and it would probably fall apart. <laughs> so again, we have our, um, our mark right here, which is three inches from the top. And this mark right here, from here to here, this is a seven inch line, okay? Yeah, three or four inches, somewhere thereabouts will be fine. So I'm going to use my folder as a straight edge and I'm going to line it up the corner right here. Hopefully I didn't scoot it over too far. There we go. All right, my friends, um, if you look at our instruction sheet once again, I'm gonna hold this up a little bit so you can see on the page. And this is also downloadable, like our other project sheets. And so again, what I did in order to get this shape of my, of my kite, I cut off the two extra flaps that were on either side. And so I have this smaller shape Okay, the smaller rectangle. Then I went to the crease in the bag right here and I marked right here. And then I measured down the side three inches. And I drew from here and I did that on both sides of our paper bag. And then I made a mark on the bottom of the bag on either side right down here and I drew a line from right there all the way down to the bottom and eventually our kite is going to look like this and it's going to be really cool. One of the things I do to try to keep those angles the same on both sides, it's kind of something that's come up, is I'll cut the one side first so I've got that angle figured out right there and then I'll fold that over to where it's going on the other side so that I can make uh, that cut right there. I kind of drew it out so I would have that line to follow. Something you might try. So what Kyle is describing is that he would um, cut this out ahead of time, fold it over, and use that as a guiding line. That can also work for you. Oh good, looks like people are um, starting to get cut, um, caught up. Yeah, try to avoid getting cut up, kids. We are playing with scissors. Don't run with them. <laughs> Let's see. Double checking the instructions. Don't worry, you do not have to be a mathematician to um, to do this project. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you get the g general angles down, you know, um, kind of coming down like a quarter to a third from the top edge and then you know, a little bit longer section on the bottom, it really will fly fine. Um, and especially, there was a question earlier about, you know, do we need to use the streamers? Uh, will it fly without them? It does fly without the streamers, but the streamers do add that kind of le level of stability and drag to the back end to keep it pointed in the correct direction. So I yeah, would these are not just decoration. Mm -hmm. Not they like actually, Rocket Mouse's tail yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they actually do serve a purpose in this project. Uh, but I will say that if you really don't want to use them for some reason or want to try multiple ones, you can try one versus the other and see how they fly for you. When my kids build these, they typically don't put a tail on. Um, and um, they fly still very well. And honestly, I think I have three or four in the trees around my house right now. So they're all stuck up there. Um, so they do fly uh, even without it. But for, for this purpose, I, I would recommend putting them on. Once we get there. <laughs> when we get to that point. Yeah. Uh, 
asked, can I remake the kite with foam board? Hmm. It might be a little difficult to make this out of foam board because you would have to either score these two lines or create three separate pieces that you then um, tape together. And then you'd have to determine the, um, the angle. I think it could work if at. you remove the paper from the foam board because you can then get kind of a gentle curve. And that's where, you know, foam board can excel, but there's a little bit more processing in terms of trying to bend it over the edge of a table and, and you know, make that curve yourself. Whereas these paper ones will accept a curve just based on the air pressure that's, that's flowing against it. Um, not to mention foam board is a little bit heavier. Uh, and so you would need higher winds to fly these at that point. So I would, foam board has its place and it's a lot of fun. And honestly, you could try it with foam board and see, see how it works for you. Um, and if you do so, report back. Let's see here, we're at 11.25. So I think I am gonna have to move on in the project. I'm gonna have to keep going. Um, but you can always, uh, when we're finished with the project and finished demonstrating it, you can always rewind the video and head back. But we are kind of getting there I on time if, if we want to be able to do a demo today. So, Oh, and, and guys, we have something kind of special for the demo. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let's not miss out on that, Claire. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Drop down camera. I'm ready for you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut on this line right here. And then I'm going to cut both sides. I believe this style of kite is referred to as a sled kite. And, which I think is interesting because I don't think it looks much like a sled to me. It kind of looks like a shovel, like a snow shovel. Hmm. I think we probably should be grateful we're not using snow shovels right now. <laughs> It's very hot today here in Indiana, my friends. Not particularly windy, though, but we have a couple ideas for how we're going to. Um, yeah, we've all run and uh, pulled the kite behind us, I hope. I mean, that's a, a fun activity. But I think we've got another idea that is going to be. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited. <laughs> I think you guys are going to like it. I think you're going to see that we're very um, ingenious. We, we're problem solvers. And my stamp okay. wasn't done quite perfectly, so I fixed that. There we go. It's a Sharpie. So now mine is purple and blue. Um, and that's kind of where I am at. Now, I've got the measurements on here, too, that in case that helps. But, um, and that seven inches on the other side here actually went to the edge in that corner. So Claire is knocking hers out and uh, hope you guys are keeping up. If, if, once again, if you fall behind and need to, you know, catch back up, uh, don't risk, you know, cutting your paper bag in a place it shouldn't be. Just go back and watch the video later. Um, but the nice thing is, is, you know, included in your kit is tape. And this paper is fairly forgiving. So if something goes wrong, you can always tape it back together. Exactly. So what we're going to do next is um, we are going to reinforce the two corners of our um, of our kite because we are going to actually cut a little hole there to put our kite string through. And like Kyle said, the dipping, but tape will help it be a little bit stronger. So what you want to do is I'm going to say do two pieces of tape here. And so I made a long enough piece of tape that I can fold it over the edge. I'm going to do that um, another time. Yeah, this that is definitely weird. the area that you want to use a little bit more tape um, than less tape. Because, yes, it does have some weight, but the strength that this is going to put into this kite in this location is really important. So I did two pieces of tape going this way, and I'm going to do two more going this way. And this will help reinforce it, like Kyle said. And also, if you happen to have, um, like, that brown masking tape at home or painter's tape, those both work pretty well. Let's see here. So I have 
a nice reinforced area here on the corner. I'm going to take my scissors and this, this part, you got to be kind of careful. So I'm folding this over and I'm just going to do a little tiny snip there. So it looks like I need to cut it a little bit more. There we go. So see, I have a little hole in um, the corner of my of my kite now, and that's where the string is going to go through. Okay. So I am going to do the same thing on the other side. So ultimately, I used four pieces of tape, two going this way and two going that way. If you're having trouble making this cut in the um, in the corner of your airplane, another thing, or not airplane, kite. <laughs> another thing you can use is a hole punch. So one of those handheld hole punchers. Um, that's actually what I usually take with me when I do this at schools and places like that. But unfortunately, we weren't able. Yes, you can use a hole punch. Um, we weren't able to buy hole punches for everybody because they're actually kind of expensive. And yeah. heavy. They would have made your flight ba uh, your flight packs kind of heavy. So we ended up not doing that. But a lot of people have hole punches at home. I know I had a lot when I was um, a kid. They were always in my craft, like my craft box. It's a fun way to make confetti. I was going to say, what were some of your favorite crafts growing up, Claire? Um, let's see. Oh, my gosh. I had so many. I was a very crafty kid. I loved... Um, I loved making jewelry, like with uh, those pony beads and stuff. Yep. I loved perler beads, you know, the ones that you iron, you know, and you make like a little design and you iron it and then it's this little plastic like flower or smiley face. Um, when I was at summer camp a long time ago, I actually made a candle out of a um, balloon mold. It was actually very interesting. So I had a lot of, I liked every kind of craft as a kid. I also liked to make costumes. Um, I always had a different Halloween costume every year. Uh, there's a question. Can I use a box knife? I don't remember if you answered no! that question. No, yeah, you can I, use a box knife. I, I don't <laughs> think I would do that unless uh, your your parent or guardian was there to help. Those are a little bit sharp and dangerous. Yeah, please don't. Please don't use a box cutter. I, I really don't recommend that. Okay, I think I'm getting my... I'm pretty sure I must have made a kite once or twice as a kid. I'm sure of it. Probably in Girl Scouts. There used to be an aviation badge for Girl Scouts. I don't know what happened to it, but I'd love it if they brought it back. I saw you jumped in earlier and said that uh, he was going to work on all uh, the videos from these projects and send us a video uh, at the end of camp. So I'm kind of excited to see that compilation oh, come through, that'd too. Be great. Yeah, looking forward to that seeing that either. email. Okay. My scissors do not want to cut through this tape. So I'm just going to squirt a little bit with my pencil. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, these pencils are sharp enough. You could probably even just kind of carefully press that through the paper if you needed something, if your scissors aren't working well. There we go. Check it out. <laughs> Nicely done. Improvising. Well, the nice thing about that is it kind of stretches the tape that's there as well. So it almost thickens that tape ring up so that's even more protected that way. Okay, so the next step, I put my tape away and I actually still need it. I just, I wanted to get everything all squared away. <laughs> Here we go. All right. It's so good to be neat and orderly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to scoot my kite up a little bit here. We're going to get our, our streamers out. All right, let's see here. This is a very... Um, like uh, leprechaun themed streamer set here that I got. I don't know about everybody else, but mine is really fun. It's like dark green and light green. I have a medium green or like a, a light green and a slightly lighter green. <laughs> but you can use any streamers that you want for your projects. Um, I actually bought some of the streamers um, at Hobby Lobby and they're really inexpensive there. <laughs> um, 
The thing I've learned about Hobby Lobby is always find a coupon. Yes, use your coupons when you go <laughs> buy your streamers there. Yeah, my so wife uh, helped me with that one. Let's see. So make sure they're they're nice and affixed to your pipe because they will. Um, There's a lot wave. of turbulence on these, yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll wave about in the wind, and you don't want to lose your streamers, especially since these are really fragile. These are just your your usual um, party streamers that you might use to decorate your house when it's your birthday party. So they are pretty delicate. It's just crepe paper, so it would it might come apart easily. You know what? If someone was wanting to be really crafty, you could probably make a streamer out of the leftover bag pieces. You know, if you just kind of cut it in a spiral, uh, you would end up with a lot of stuff there. Um, You'd have a lot of streamer. Yeah. So, go. like, if you're building this uh, at home and and you didn't receive the flight pack uh, or the streamers, then you could easily do that and still have something that's going to um, kind of initiate that drag force that keeps it pointed in the right direction. Exactly. All right, so now I'm going to be adding my string. And yes, I am a fan of green. <laughs> I'm wearing green today. And we do have green streamers. <laughs> so I'm unwinding a bit of my, my kite string here. And if you didn't get kite string, um, well, if you didn't get a flight pack, you can use really any kind of string for this, something that is a little bit thicker than thread. And, um, yeah, if you have some yarn quite, or something like that, yarn will work. Yarn will definitely work. It'll be mm -hmm. strong enough too. So definitely ask if you can raid the, um, yarn stash in your house for some yarn. I have plenty of yarn at my house. That's one of my hobbies now actually is uh, fiber arts. So I like to do that. That's, I like to crochet. I, thought crochet. I was going to ask crochet or knitting or. Yeah, I have plenty of blankets. It's very cold here in Indiana in the winter, so I just I pile up the blankets. I bring them to work, actually, because our offices are really, really cold. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to be stringing the, um, the string through the holes that we made in our kite. And what I did to make it a little bit easier on myself, I took my string and I, I folded it over. So I have this little loop, and it will help bring the string through the hole in the bag. So you want to pinch it and just work it through the hole there. And if the hole is a little bit too small. I used my uh, pencil to kind of help push that through. Yeah, you can, like I, Kyle just said, I was about to say that um, <laughs> you can always use your pencil. So I got through one of them. And then I'm going to bring it through the other one. We're gonna have no, it looks like it's it. somebody's birthday, so happy birthday to them. Happy birthday. So glad you're spending your birthday at camp. <laughs> oh, there's a question here. Um, it looks like it, they're very excited about asking this question. What do we do during in-person in Indiana Camp AMA? So let me jump in and calmly describe it. So uh, the in-person camp, it's a little bit different than this. While you're stringing your stuff up, I'll talk about it. Um, in-person camp is for a little bit older age group. And uh, the idea is that we have world-class uh, pilots in model aviation come on site here at the IAC. And uh, we host 30 to 40 camp kids. Um, Boys and girls are all welcome to come. Um, there's a fee associated with that. And it's a week-long camp activity where uh, every morning we have a STEAM activity where we get to explore different ideas or concepts around model aviation and aviation in general um, and explore those opportunities. Um, and then in the afternoons, it's more of what we would like to call maybe a fun fly, where if someone wants to learn how to do a certain maneuver or trick, they can go and experience that from these world-class experts and uh, learn how to do that. Now, of course, if someone isn't a world-class pilot already, that's fine. You know, the idea of camp is that we are there to teach and to help and to train. Um, and so it's really a fun time. In the evenings, you know, we may do things um, at the hotel in terms of a, a pool party or, you know, campfires and, and fun activities. Uh, some night flying occurs. It, it's really um, an awesome time. Did I cover all the bases, Claire? What else do you want to throw in there about Camp AMA? 
you don't like Kyle said. You don't have to be um, a world class pilot. You you don't even have to know how to fly RC if you just have an interest in it. We have trainers here, and we have pilots on hand that'll help you learn how to fly RC planes. And kids have a great time at this camp. Um, they form lifelong friendships, and they're able to bond over a shared hobby, and it's really a lot of fun. So yeah. I'm really excited for next year. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that we didn't get to do the in-person this year, but I'm glad we got to do this. This has yeah. been so much fun. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you know, to get the most out of camp, you do want to know a little bit about how to fly safely. You know, the idea of safety is very important. If, if you're coming in with, with very little experience, um, you know, we'd probably set up a separate flight line to keep you safe and everyone else safe. You know, safety is one of the hallmarks of our hobby. Um, we've got a great safety record and we want to keep it that way. So, um, you know, having that understanding, reach out to a local club, become an AMA member, um, get some of the basics knocked out, and your experience at camp is going to be wonderful. Exactly. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how you're going to be stringing up your uh, kite, and we're going to be getting close to uh, demo time, so I'm really excited about this. So what I've done is, here's the end of my string, and I've pulled a length of string through both of the holes on either side. There we go. Perfect. And you want this string to not be too short in the middle. So it might be, there might be a little bit of slack here. And then see, I've drawn the string through about, I don't know, like two feet. And I'm going to take this, and this is kind of difficult. I'm going to tie a knot in the string. And so this can be difficult because you are going to want to make a rather big loop so that your um, your handle can go through it. So, there you go. so I'm going to just pull the string a little bit further out. There we go. And you want that length to be, I think, about six feet is what the instructions call for. So we've got kind of... We haven't got quite that long. Yes, you get to bring your own planes to the in-person camp AMA. Oh, and there was someone asking, yeah, do we supply airplanes? We have some only, aircraft on hand. Um, but Only uh, if you're learning to fly, do we supply um, airplanes. We have a couple trainers on hand. Which yeah, we are, have some trainers. Um, we also have some EDFs, some, some you know, a little bit fancier things. We have some uh, 3D aircraft. Uh, a lot of that, though, ends up going to the instructors to utilize um, and, and fly in that way. Uh, some of the things, like some of the larger 3D-style uh, aircraft, uh, we'll buddy box with students um, just to make sure that the equipment stays safe. Um, but... Uh, like the EDFs and things, if someone is to the level that they can fly those safely and um, uh, that sort of thing, we have a partnership with uh, Horizon Hobby, for instance, and they provide us with some aircraft to use. And so uh, we're happy to use them. Exactly. So, yeah, it's a little, little bit of info for next year's camp. And that camp is, again, for kids 13 to 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are 17 now... You probably won't be able to come to camp because you have to, if you turn 18 before camp, you cannot um, participate, unfortunately. So we've got our string here. We've got a knot, our knot tied in it right there. That was a slip knot. You guys, right there. There it is. It's very small. There's our slip knot. See. So you tied your string, you, you drew your string through both sides of your kite, you, you brought it, I did not do six feet just because I don't have the room for it, but I did it about, I'm gonna say, that looks pretty close, a, a good amount, I'd yeah. say it'd be, it'd be six feet if it's folded over, so. Yeah, I think that looks perfect to me. This extra little bit here, I'm just going to leave it. Let's see. So you should have a kite with two streamers on it. Your string. And all that. All set up. And so. 
There's your kites. And so now that we have made our kite, we are going to be able to go outside and fly it. So I'm actually going to um, wait on my producer to come in here because we are going to be jumping from the studio camera to a um, handheld camera. So what I'm going to go ahead and do... Kyle, I'm not going to be able to hear you because I am going to be taking off my earpiece. That's so fine. I'll, I'm going to throw my stuff outside. down. Yeah, I'll see, see you outside. I'll be there in a second. All right, everybody. I'm taking off my my, my uh, earpiece. Not that I need it for you guys, but because I'm going to be going outside, I am putting on my mask. So I'll be hanging out with Kyle and uh, my friend Dylan. Who is our producer? So I'm just going to be waiting on him to come um, pick me up from the studio. Going to put on my sunglasses. Why are we using a paper bag? Great question, Levi. We are using a paper bag because it's something that is commonly found in um, in one's home. And they're pretty easy to get, and they are um, they tend to be really good building material for kites, especially for a really simple kite. Hi, Dylan. You ready? Let's go. So here's my kite. Here it is with the streamers and everything. I'm very excited. So let's go. So we're going to head out through our break room here. And because it's not particularly windy today, we have a different method of flying our kite. So we're going to take a trip on the golf cart. <laughs> Hey, we got a little bit of a breeze now. Actually, hey, if you stay right in there, that might be kind of a wind tunnel between those trees. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, we got a nice breeze right now. The difference on this one is I tied off the tunnel and started pulling the loop. It was doing so well. Oh, uh, we lost our wind. I just got a little bit. Got his going. How's it going, Claire? Yeah, they work, guys. Depending on how windy it is or how willing you are to run, this can go up pretty high. Yeah, 
So yeah, there's two different methods. You know, fire in her through a loop. I tied off each corner. I think either one can work depending on the wind. Oh, we just got some. There we go. Here we go. Our uh, live stream went from about 11 a.m. Eastern time to noon, and we made some really cool kites out of paper bags. So I'm really glad you guys decided to join us, and if you like, come see us this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be sitting down with my friend Ted Dowd and learn about his drones in schools program. I'll see you guys all later. Bye. I don't know when.